Welcome back one and all, I'm Harv and you're watching Harv Video Audio Stuff. In this video I wanted to show you how to colour grade your footage for a cool looking vintage black and white look. And I'm using the word vintage very loosely, it's more of a feeling or impression when you see it. Basically as long as it doesn't end up looking super dynamic and modern, Sin City kind of thing springs to mind, then we'll be in good shape. I'm just gonna focus on the grading. Of course, there's lots of things that you can do in camera, which I may cover in a separate video. Definitely let me know in the comments if you'd like to see that. And be sure to check the links in the description. Uh, everything you need will be there. So here's the shot I started with, and this was taken from a recent music video that I filmed. It was shot in S-Log2 on my Sony A7S II, and as you can see, it looks quite washed out and quite rubbish to be honest, really low contrast, so let's see what we can do with this. My goal was to get it looking from as it is now to this. Quite a cool looking, dare I say it, vintage looking black and white and I'll show you everything I did to get to this stage. But first let's start with a good basic way to get a black and white look and then we'll work our way up to this full demonstration. So the most obvious way to make something black and white would be to desaturate the whole image. However, did you know that Final Cut Pro has a black and white plugin? Don't be expecting anything too special, it's not that great, but it is easy and it does do one or two cool things. However, the first thing I'm going to do is just play with the levels a little bit and bring out some more detail, give it a tiny bit more contrast. The main cool thing about Final Cut's black and white plugin is that you can tell it which colour to use as a reference point when converting your footage to black and white. You'll definitely want to play around with this because, of course, all scenes are different. Just be aware that if you select a colour such as blue, for example, you will get a lot more noise. Unfortunately, that's just the nature of shooting video or photo. Blue is just the noisiest colour. So that's the easiest method, but I implore you to dig deeper and I'm sure we can come up with something more spectacular. Here it comes. For our second example, we're going to be using colour wheels and curves, so there's no reason why this couldn't be applied in any software. Firstly, I'm going to desaturate our footage and then I'm going to play with the levels and just stretch it out a little bit. Next, I'm going to add some curves and I really would say if you haven't seen my video about how to use curves, it's well worth a watch. I'll link it below, it's really, really helpful. As I almost always do when adding curves, I add lots of control points because it gives you amazing control over the contrast in your footage. I then go ahead and tweak each control point and sort of just massage the footage until it looks how I want it to look. And bear in mind, I am keeping in mind that I want it to look like vintage black and white, so that's what I'm aiming for. The eagle-eyed amongst you will have noticed that I've raised the very darkest of my shadow area control points. And that's only because I'm just trying to avoid that super to high dynamic range look that you'd get in my initial example, Sin City. The raised black look really reminds me of a vintage feel, so that's what I've done. So that's our second example using colour wheels and curves, and I think you'll agree it looks much, much better than our first example. I was especially pleased with the lovely silvery detail I was able to bring out of our talent's shirt. This simply wouldn't have been possible just using colour wheels and the black and white plugin. Now, of course, I saved the best till last. Our last example, I'm going to be using a lookup table, curves, and all sorts of other goodies to get us to that awesome vintage looking black and white look. So for our last example, I'm going to start by just making some very minor tweaks to the colour wheels. And for this example, I'm not going to desaturate it. I'm going to apply a lookup table and that's going to do our desaturation for us. This makes so much sense to me. Why on earth would I just desaturate my footage when I can let a lookup table mathematically change the colour so it looks so much more interesting? For this example, I've gone for the Velocore Black Lake LUT, which to me has bags of character and it's one that I use for almost anything that I'm doing black and white. Next, I'm applying another instance of curves and you'll notice that I have actually placed this after my lookup table, which is not something I normally do, but in this example, the lookup table does raise the blacks quite a lot, which is a quite a, a bold look, and I actually want to lower them a bit. I want to tweak them further with my curves. In the end, I went for a very unusual S-type curve where the highlights are really exaggerated, but I really loved the look I got. So there's our final cool-looking example, and just to put the icing on the cake for this grade, I'm going to add some film grain and a vignette for authenticity. Hopefully you can see the film grain after YouTube compression, sometimes it's not great with that kind of thing, 
and I don't know, maybe I took this grade a little bit too far, it's a touch too gritty maybe, but I've been known to like a bit of grit. So there are our three black and white examples, using a black and white plugin, using curves and color wheels, and then using lookup tables and vignette and film grain and that kind of thing. Of course, I always want to know your preferred method of grading black and white footage. Let's all learn together, so definitely get your comments below. Let's teach each other something today. And that's it for now. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I've made a huge amount of videos like this, so I'll pop a couple of particularly good ones on this side. And if you fancy sticking around a little longer and you're not already subscribed, definitely do it. Uh, hit the blob that's just over my shoulder right here. And until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys.